That is from the OHST, large diversity, uh, wide temporal range, wide range of body sizes, a wide range of habitats and lifestyles. And many of them, was, or some, all of them, have been thought to have some kind of tympanic ear, meaning that the distal end of the status, or its carpalaceous extension, extra status or extra columnar, contacts the um, eardrum. While the proximal foot plate transmits the vibrations of the eardrum into the inner ear. As seen today in frogs, which has implications for the Temesplum hypothesis of the significant origins. This is a horizontal section for a frog ear. You have, you have the tip of the eardrum, the stapes which rocks up and down out of the plane of this figure, and the tympanic annulus, which is a cartilage cone that holds the mid ear cavity open and, and holds the tympanum taut. And the, the up and down vibrations of the stapes vibrate the fluids in the inner ear. In crawl view, you can see that um, the stapes forms a hinge joint with the ventral margin of the finestral alus. And as the tympanum moves in, the, the foot that moves out, moves away from the finestral alus. Most of this movement happens in this wide open airspace, which can, is continuous from the throat to the eardrum. And if we don't count the extra status, the status, also part of the status does not reach the head surface. So it comes to the coast. This is a figure from a classical paper, almost my age, which illustrates the tympanic annulus in the Samaritan bullfrog and compares it to. Um, is this sort of uh, hiccups, this sort of the tennis model, which also has a uh, space in its shape, conical space surrounded by uh, dome bones and the quadrate, which is interesting because um, the, in the tadpole, the, the tympanic animus forms close to the quadrate, it has been claimed to be, uh, to come from an extension of the quadrate that then separates. Here's another visceral fit, um, which also has a sort of process of the project. It's not ossified all the way up, but it's there. And it encloses around temporal space into which projects this a status, small, straight, horizontal status. And the description doesn't quite ad address the question whether the status could actually move. I have not yet managed to see the specimen myself, I hope to do so before SCP. But this looks a lot like in, in this frog, American bullfrog and a uh, Goliath frog, where uh, small straight status points into the tympanic angles. This morphology is not limited to frogs, it's all seen in these middle permanent annuals where you have this huge kernel of space into which this time state is projects, giving a very favorable ratio for the area of tympanum to state of uh, place. This goes in a hypothetical calculation extra status. In the affidavit, the sorophoid tennis funnel dosatum, which is often considered particularly close to the recipients, the status is rather larger than in this uh, zero fit. And it's sort of parallel to the paroxysmal process. It has a rather large foot plate. As you can see here again, here's the status again in full view. Um, on the, on the paroxysmal process, you have these two lateral processes in the interview. Um, that was suggested to have held a tympanic animus. I wonder if they held the status instead. The foot plate has this unfinished ring, which is continuously half so we can't really tell if this was no wire. Another disorder for it, the trematopid, um, has this strange optic notch here, really not shaped in this case, and the status is pretty long. 
and uh, massive and stays close to the practical process again. It's not projecting to the middle of this. But the derivatives um, are, may also be close to the distal point of, of the collet outside. Um, appear to have been terrestrial or uh, amphibious. Um, reports of a lateral line are probably misunderstandings of ancient literature. And there's again this conical space, sort of conical. Um, and there is a both press on the quadrant, find what it's there. But the status in this um, rostral and call view of the brain case um, stays again close to the particle process and uh, the distal end is close to the surface of the skull. Terms for stabilities are often called uh, rod like. This is not a rod, it's a curl. The proximal end is less ossified than the observator, even while the distal end. It's ossified except for this pit here. Um, I'll get to this feature later. I do have one of famous in that we can achieve a certain amount of pain in this context. Probably very close to the sort of idea, we'll see. Um, it also has this, sounds better in French, I think, échantillon routique, this excavation. Um, it has a dual process on the quadrant, and also, interestingly, on the quadrant of Jugal. Um, in the descriptions, this is said to be an um, extra flange from the pterygoid, uh, which would close the space off eventually. Um, one of the two authors, Rodrigo uh, Sola has uh, uh, taken another look at the specimen um, and show it to me. And we agree that this is just a part of the radius of a cherry wood which has uh, slipped backwards. So this sort of space is not closed off in life. The status though is pretty large. As I said, it's large. Um, it has a large foot plate. The distal end is also large but um, much of it seems to be unoccupied. Um, the status of the, of the cane toad, in comparison, is similar in length, but has a much smaller foot plate, a much more favorable ratio for timber of size to foot plate size. And although the display is better ossified, it's tiny. Uh, in this Zatrenki uh, tennis um, which is probably also this sort of um, it was a growth series, so the supposed object notch ends up like this, and the skull is very flat. So, uh, if this contained a tympanum, it would have to attach to the lateral side of this tabular horn, but this lateral side is ornamented all the way down. So, any tympanum must have been tilted and attached to something unknown here. And from the other side, you can see the status looks a lot like in the derivatives. Pretty massive. Here we are, ventral view. And in here, we've got we've got uh, doors that down, so the tabula meeting the parts of the process. And on top of this is the status. Um, sometimes in older literature you can find the claim that the status met the tabular. That is not the case. That seems to have been, uh, it looks that way in specimen for the encrusted with this annoying ironstone cross. It's not in the specimen. Um, so as I said, the parallel is large. It is sticks close to the practical process. I wonder if it was attached to how it life. And uh, this lens is free, but it's close to the process. And the foot plate is huge. It spans the entire available space between the base table and articulation and the the process. <coughs> Edops has a very large scholar, a bit like this. 
as normally on exhibit at Harvard and in vertically on this metal hook thing. And this is Kishon Kriptik, nice round. Um, the status is kept separately. I didn't have a better scale bar of me on my finger. You can see it's pretty big and on the in tilted uh, crane north view you can see this across the top view you can see this um, smooth flat surface on the dotted side. If you put the skull and the stapes together, it holds um, the stapes just sticks in there and doesn't move much. Um, The tabula and the stapes curve towards each other a bit. The paroxysmal process and um, only the proximal half of it is ossified, very much unlike in the areas. Um, so, this is a view from uh, into this cavity. Looks like this. So, you see the long, large stapes parallel to the paroxysmal process. And this the flat area is parallel and very close to the parts of the process. I wonder if it was an attachment surface with soft tissue. Um, yeah, that's just like nerves. Um, the break head is plastered over because um, on exhibit it bears weight. Um, this also concerns most of the margin of the uh, finestral always. But it's still uh, very large and the footprint of the stapes fits into it so well that the stapes don't move if you stick it in, if you put it on. And other tennis ones are done pictures of both, but I just saw some stamp cephalosaurus. Generally, the stapes is much like the Arabs and Edubs. It grows with the width of the head so that the, the, this length stays close to the distal. Uh, the this length of the stapes stays close to the skull surface. Meaning that in Macedon source, for example, the stable switch is 12 centimeters length. And in some tennis tunnels, especially these stairs to the walls, um, the base of the lateral process is ossified. It points in the general direction of the quadrant, uh, or maybe the cerebral higher. And I wonder if the postural lateral scar on the stable of dendrobitum is the same thing. Um, this process means that uh, we should be very careful in talking about the shaft of the stapes, because the shaft isn't, most of the shaft isn't homologous between different animals. Um, in tennis models, most of its length is, uh, should be called the dose distal process, as Ben Schock has been doing recently. Um, the stapes in uh, full grown animals has a deeply digitated suture with the parasitic web in mastodon soils and uh, in some separate soils too, probably also elsewhere. Outer fusion has been reported, difficult to, to say if, if the actual meant is future, but it says fusion, into um, the original animals, and also in uh, edops, which is interesting because the stage is kept separately from the skull, but the edges of the foot plates could be broken. So the stapes could not move, there was no kind of defined gear. Uh, the other common function of the stapes is to form a, a when it doesn't participate in a defined gear, it forms a strut between the uh, ventral part of the brain case and the part of the quadrant. That doesn't have my uh, or strut between the ventral part of the brain case and the tabula has been suggested for ear nerves, I've not seen this not the case either. So what did the stapes do? Um, we can introduce to a spherical, which is the first filter, but then after this, I should go. Filter is breathes air from the spiracles, and uh, muscles for opening and closing with the spherical attached to the high mandibular, which is the stapes. So I wonder if this is the unsupplied distal end of the stapes. Uh, breathing air from the spherical appears to have been very widespread. Even in, in, in tennis balls and root wheels, then you find 
the circle very high on the this and then very high um, on the skull and the nostrils are much more ventral. A back to the frog here, if that is supposed to be inherited from a tennis bone structure, then it should also be inherited from the first lesson figure, which is difficult to arrange because that hypothesis requires three independent parallel bosses in Sicilians, other relatives, and salamanders. All, all three of these don't show any sign of having ever had a tibia. And it should be homologous to the spherical, as we just heard. Um, this is a section through the, the year of an American spring peeper, um, horizontal section again, at the end of metamorphosis, the last number of stage 25. So these animals are already walking around on land. The status has only begun to form. This earth doesn't reach the, it come anywhere near the surface of the head. And as it says, status of a lack of projection toward the side of the head, just this. This is all the capsule, these two. Um, there's no evidence for middle ear cavity to find animals or tympanum. The, the epidermis of the head is just normal epidermis, yet um, or between this and the inner ear is massive. Um, what happens next is, so this is a drawing of the same, and then 20 days later, the tympanic animals have begun to appear. Uh, not necessarily, there's no evidence of a connection with the quadrate, but the paper doesn't have the resolution to tell us for sure. The tympanic, um, the middle ear cavity has appeared, is an outgrowth from the, from the throat, but it's, it only forms at this stage long after the gill slits have come and gone. And then a later, it's a status contact, the tympanic outgrowth thins out, the sixth of the is completed. So the growth of tympanic ears are at best rare in tennis models, and the best candidates are not unfamiliar with the surface. Having one. The, the tympanic frog here is an innovation within its evidence. Uh, the second tube in the middle of the frogs is not homologous to the spherical, um, at least in Neobajakians. One should think that the ontogeny of the ear of Xenopus is, is known to science. One would apparently be wrong. Haven't found anything in the literature. How does I get to mention the pressure system? Why would that involve the tympanic ears already present? And the speculate which for Ear Johnson may have been some production organs before they became, before the state was touched and it became some reception organs. Sound is irradiated through the eardrums in frogs today to some degree. Thank you, curators and the monsters. And you for your attention on this picture is completely wrong.